If you cannot make fun of yourself, who can you make fun of? What's up, Fish Tank people? Dustin's Fish Tank's bringing it to you on a Sunday, baby. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's video coming up, we're gonna show you an above water aquaponics table that we're working on. We've also got some below water action that we wanna show you. We wanna introduce you to some new fish friends here in the greenhouse and say goodbye to some old fish friends that we lost recently. And it is Sunday, it is Spigotus Spigotus Species Sunday. We've got a bunch of plants to show you. Okay, so this video is being filmed a day before the solstice. It is also my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. Uh, it's one of the longest days of the year and hanging out with my mom on her birthday makes it feel like one of the longest days of the year. But I wanna show what we have going on as far as some plant growth and then show you what we're gonna do with some above water growth because the sun is out when you go to bed, the sun is out when I get up. Uh, it's just up, up and out. So longer photo period, lots of growth. Wanna show some of what we have going on here. These baby tears are absolutely popping off in here we have a full what's that 200 of them not to mention the one that are on the regrow right here we've also got some pearl weed that is really ripping right here and we're actually going to plant a whole basin of this let me show you this this is part of the process here we go through the melting of the wonderful crypt balense and then these came in looking horrible but are coming back quite nicely and I actually forget the scientific name of these but we'll put that down below but they have a little bit of a rot smell to them, but I just threw a whole bunch in here and I'm surprised how many of them came back. But again, one of the longest days of the year, plenty of light, plenty of nutrients, good uh, base of the rock wool. We actually dip the rock wool in our growth juice, which gives us some phenomenal growth, which I'm gonna show you more of here in a second. So this is how we do it now. We give them a proper, just straight up visual, like funeral type thing. This is my boy right here. This is the original OG goldfish from BDR Ponds. This guy was originally came in black, was at the very bottom of the basins that I was buying that are now in the second greenhouse. He was this big and he was tiny. And we were like, we got a survivor. We got a dude. And he just came and he grew and he was the only goldfish that like organically came here. And I believe it reproduced as well. In fact, I know it did because there's tons of babies in there. Rest in peace my friend i don't know what happened but we will observe you out here on this cinder block in the sun until something comes along and eats you and continues the circle of life we love you appreciate everything you did in the greenhouse you were the bomb i used to love eating my lunch with you you are a straight up thug you are not forgotten and you are honored my friend mr goldfish so this is one of my favorite basins this is one of the few basins that we actually run fish with the plants and they seem to work well together. On the surface here, we have these little rice fish that just are such prolific breeders, they breed like crazy. And I'm gonna talk about the surface plants in a second, but the underwater growth that we get here is amazing with the Bacopa yellow flame. This gets this bright red, the tips on it, because it gets the extra nitrate as the byproduct from the fish waste in here. And this is a heavy, heavy goldfish tank. So the goldfish are in here, they're hiding right now. And what's fun about the goldfish is the goldfish also help expedite and clean out the red root floaters. And what I mean by expedite is they eat the excess nitrate as well. I just added yesterday these green red root floaters, exact same species and batch as these, but I put in some of the azola and I believe that the goldfish have been eating the azola, but there are enough goldfish in here that they have just been slowly nibbling at what they can eat from the surface, and then they don't seem to eat the red root floaters, so it's a total win. They clean out the red root floaters, they help feed the red root floaters, and they help feed the Bacopa yellow flame. So this is just a total symbiotic win for everybody involved because the plant of course the plants actually filter the water as well for the fish and this greenhouse has been a lot of fun this is our first full summer season in here but this is no shade cloths full sun ready to rock and this greenhouse we have to be particularly conscious of the 75 percent rule because we have so much natural daylight that like this basin right here is, oh, as I stand up on it, old man legs. This basin is chocked full of plants. And you'll notice there's no algae, there's no discoloration on it. 
So this is the, we have to have heavy, heavy plant loads this time of year, but if we get down below 75%, and really this time of year it's more like 80, that's when we get in trouble because we have too much light and not enough plants in there to absorb it. So some of these basins need to be uh, actually more plants added to them. Joe's doing a water change over here. I want to show the hygrophila that's popping off right here above water. This is the factory of sadness. Should be a nice uh, reference to all of you in Northeast Ohio who are fans of the Cleveland Browns, the single greatest franchise team ever in the off season until they actually get to playing on the field. But regardless, this is the factory of sadness. Folks, this is a goal for me, all right? I'm gonna go to Earl Nightingale, strangest secret. Um, think of a ship leaving a harbor without a captain or a crew. No aiming point, no guidance. Just start the engines and let it rip. I think you'll agree with me that if the ship gets out of the harbor at all, it'll be lucky, it'll probably end up derelict on a beach. It's the same with the human being. People with goals succeed because they know where they are going. This is a goal that I have wanted to have for a very, very, very long time. And this has been growing for a year and we have hit that critical mass where now the plants are out competing the algae and it's just steamrolling dwarf sag. We sell enough sag to feed a small army and we pull it from here and it's the best stuff around. So super duper excited about the dwarf sag uh, popping in here. And we're gonna go a couple other directions with the foreground plants. I have to give another shout out to Joe. He has done a tremendous job of executing the plan that we work together on to get this kind of growth and just kind of maintain this stuff because it doesn't just show up in the mail. So super duper excited about the Dwarf Sag. We're also potting it in house now for our wholesale customers all across the country, almost all 50 states, by the way. That is also coming on tremendous. So I wanna show kind of some of how he's potting those, but really pumped about the Dwarf Sag taking off, doing its thing. And once we hit, you know, peak grow season, boom, just let it rip. So loving the way this is popping off for us. So down here is the uh, above water grown dwarf sage that we're converting, but look at how quickly that, those did not come in with roots like that, boys and girls. So we put them in here, we soak the rock wool in growth juice, we add dirt in there, plants eat at their roots, feed them where they eat, but we're getting a little bit of the die off of the above water growth. Doesn't do so hot on there, but then this one over here, nice root growth taken off, like holy cow. This was potted last, I want to say Wednesday or Thursday. So it's not all success, but certainly headed in enough, the right direction. When you've got root growth, you're going to get plant growth. All the above water growth is dying off. New growth coming out the center. Very happy about these in a week from now. Oh, these are all just great. I said I wasn't going to talk about these, but look at that. Oh, oh, oh. And that's a, some of that's above water growth that will convert. But when you got roots like that, you're good. In fact, I wish I could feed them more, but that is and this tank has been absolutely rad. We have some friends in here. Obviously, I've got nothing but love for the Golden Dojo Loach. Name a better fish than the Golden Dojo Loach. But this tilapia right here, Big Daddy from Cincinnati, just devouring any and all algae in here, which has been tremendous. And the bigger he gets, the more he eats, and the more algae he eats, the cleaner the tank gets. This tank is running uh, and has been running all summer long. The fact that he's been able to keep up with that and the plant load on top has increased. So the plant load on top has increased enough to where the algae underneath is getting less light, but also that fish down there is eating it. So this is what I would consider balanced. So now we could get away with adding more plants underneath if we wanted to. This biker's awesome. So part of the catalyst for this video, um, if you cannot make fun of yourself, who can you make fun of? People around here refuse to clean up after me and I don't blame them. This is a tub of plants that I was filling orders on Black Friday. This has been sitting since, I don't know, whatever, seven months. And I didn't pick it up and everybody refused to pick up after me and I don't blame them. So this tub right here has just plants left in a bucket to go and grow wild. So, you know, yeah, I didn't pick up my mess. This is what the mess grew like and it's beautiful. And I wanna have a bunch of this growing above the water because then you can just trim these off and then sink them and sell them. But this is part of the catalyst for what we're about to do over here. A growing reminder to pick up after yourself. I wanna show you some above water action that we have going on over here. This was formerly known as the dome. We got some rain last night. We leave this vent open. And so this has actually filled up just a tiny bit, which is fine. 
but we have some sword growth that I want to take more advantage of. So in today's video, we're gonna raise this bed up, get some closer observation of the swords. For now, the goal is just to get these up to eye level and then just play and observe at eye level and just watch the plants, watch the plants, watch the plants. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drain this one down, then I'm gonna take those cinder blocks and those cinder blocks and I'm gonna build this up uh, two cinders high vertically like that. We're gonna build that sucker up and then we're gonna leave room on either side to get to it. It's nice because I've got power there, power there, and power there because this homie's designed a greenhouse or two in his day. And we're gonna elevate um, these, get them up, and then kind of work on the plumbing. So I am super excited about this. Just something new, something fun. It's raining right now. And Andrew, if you can just grab it and just slam it up and let's look at the ceiling real quick. Open to the sun only, it's cloudy and it's raining. So right here, this post is our reference point of uh, water coming in. So this actually will get rain water and you can see the little drips on there. So increased humidity levels, whatever. The problem is that rainwater sucks because it has no like nutrients in it and it's probably a low pH and these things like would like a little more nutrients to grow faster. But regardless, so you can see this had a lot more water in it earlier in the day. We drained all that out. I am going to add slowly some water to this, but now it's at eye level. Now it's like at the like, let's play, let's figure out what's working. Let's watch, dare I say, listen and observe what's happening over here because it's working, again, this is the almost longest day of the year, so I don't wanna to get too confident about above water growth that we have happening right now, but we have examples down here of where it has been successful. So we're gonna consolidate some of these, get these up here, add some crushed coral, that seems to be the, the X factor in a lot of plant growth that we're having at the substrate. So we're gonna add some crushed coral to this and uh, fill this up. I might even fill it up all the way and get rid of all that duckweed, but the duckweed doesn't matter in above water growth. 